Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another Brewer's Minute. So this week we're doing something a little bit different. One question I get asked all the time is, what do you use for actually building decks? What do you use to search for cards and like the actual nuts and bolts of putting decks together? And the answer to that question is actually Magic Online. So Magic Online, as far as I can tell, is the best deck building tool available. As far as filtering, finding the cards you need, it is way better than any other site or program I found as far as that's concerned. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is kind of the benefits and the how-to of using Magic Online as a deck building tool. So a quick reminder before we break down deck building on Magic Online. If you enjoy Brewers Minute and the other series here on the channel, it would be awesome of you if you could take a quick second, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. First off, I should say, Magic Online, you don't really have to play it to use it as a deck building tool. You do have to pay a one-time $10 account creation fee or whatever to get your account. But when you think about it, compared to the prices you pay for a lot of things, a one-time $10 fee for the best deck building tool available on the market really isn't bad. So what I'm trying to say is you don't have to play Magic Online to use Magic Online as a deck building tool. Pay that 10 bucks, use it as a way to build your paper decks, and then you can never actually play Magic Online if you don't want to, never buy cards on Magic Online or anything, but still take advantage of its deck building power. So this is my collection page on Magic Online. You can see 61,000 cards, blah, 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 blah. That's where we're at right now. So we're going to talk a little bit about what you got to do to maximize the power of Magic Online for deck building. So step one is you have to go to this quantity tab and set it to zero. Right now, it's only showing cards that I own. If you set it to zero, it's going to show all the cards on Magic Online, which is almost all the cards ever printed in Magic. I think there's a small number of cards from really old sets, Homelands, Fallen Empires, Legends, that haven't made it onto the program. All the important cards that see play in any real format are on here, even from those sets. But if you try to build this or that, I don't know, Pirates deck, like some super casual theme deck, you occasionally run into really old bad cards that no one plays in any real format that aren't on Magic Online. The other thing you want to check is make sure this does not say show version separately. Make sure that's not clicked. If it does, you see it doubles up here because of foils and it'll double up even more because it's showing Expeditions, and we get to Kamigawa, we'll see more Champion's Helm. So some cards, like Negate, there'll be 60 different versions or something between foils and sets and supplemental products. So just make sure that that's not clicked. I'm not sure if that defaults on or off. So make sure that that's not clicked. And now we have the ability to do all kinds of crazy searching in Magic Online. The two things you want to get used to are the... Filters over here are super important, super helpful, super powerful. And then also the sorting feature up here. Uh, there's a bunch of different sorting options. Basically, the ones that I use most commonly are sort by color, sort by converted mana cost, and sort by rarity. So let's look at these first, and then we'll look at the filters, and then we'll use a couple of quick examples of how this works. So sort by color is pretty sweet. It just arranges cards in order of color. One of the things I love about sorting by color is basically Magic Online recognizes double mana costs is different than single mana costs. So you can see right now we're at two converted mana cost white cards, and these are white and colorless, or white and generic mana. And then next would be double white cards before we get to the three converted mana cost cards. So it recognizes double mana cost cards is slightly more expensive. Then we got to three mana, it would be generic, generic white would be first, then generic white, white would be second, then white, white, white would be third. So not only is it sorted by color, it's actually broken down in a really helpful way, even within the converted mana cost in colors. The same thing with converted mana cost, we sort by that, we get all the zero drops first, then the one drops, all the way to the most expensive cards in the game. And then the other one that's helpful is occasionally sort by rarity. Uh, if you're looking for cards, just like browsing. Sometimes when I'm looking at Budget Magic, I'll just sort by rarity, kind of browse through all the rares and see if I see something that jumps out as a card I'd like to build around. Uh, so th those are the filters I use most often. But let's put this back to converted mana cost, I guess. So now let's talk about 
the filters over here. So most commonly, format is almost always used. So let's say we're building a budget magic deck for modern. So we click modern, and now only cards that are modern legal will be shown in this area. Uh, we're still sorted by converted mana cost, and you can sort by set. Sometimes this comes up with very specific things, like we do the time period commander clashes. So we could just click the sets that we want to. But let's say we're building a budget magic modern deck, and it's a white black deck, and we are trying to find our mana base. We're trying to build a mana base. So we can go to this color filtering, click white and black. So now we're seeing all modern cards that are white or black. And then we can go to type and click land. And we have all modern legal white and black lands. And one of the great parts about Magic Online is it filters really intuitively. Technically lands are colorless and this land doesn't even add white mana so you think that a lot of things would filter this as a colorless card but since it has a black activated ability it's actually considered a white or black card same with blighted steep so it's there's some nice aspects of building on magic online uh orzov church of the deals the same way where it includes the activated abilities in with the correct colors so what we have here is all the lands that are legal and modern that are white or black. So let's sort these by rarity, because with Budget Magic, sometimes that's easiest. Uh, so you can kind of see the top couple rows are, I guess from Urborg up, or Vault of the Archangel. These are all the rare lands. Uh, you will notice that promos do get put to the front. They're considered their own special rarity. So that's why Blighted Fen is here. We see all the white or black lands. We look through... Caves of Koilos is a good option for a white or black budget deck. Probably not that expensive. Isolated Chapel, maybe if we have enough budget. Shambling Vent. Uh, Mars Flats, we can kind of cross off because it's too expensive. Maybe Temple of Silence, we can scroll down, see if there's any uncommon lands that fit. We have a Creature Land here in Forbidding Watchtower. And then, of course, at the bottom, we have the basics. So it's super helpful in that sense. And we can do way more than this. So let's say we are, let's stay in modern. So we're going to keep the filter to modern. And let's say we're building a deck and we are looking for something that gives all of our creatures haste so we can type all haste in the search bar and this is going to bring up cards that in one way or another have those words on them so we might have to still filter through them a little bit this one jumps out mass Syria, one mana everything has haste hellkite charger what does this do all right, uh, it has haste and untaps all your creatures, so that's not really what we're looking for. Bushwhacker effects, haste kinda until end of turn. We have not that many options, really. Then you think, well, maybe I didn't type this right. What if we do creatures haste? Does this bring more options? And it looks like we have more cards now. So that's one of the things you need to do is just kind of figure out the the right terms and there is a sweet trick to this so it seems like on a magic card the correct term for finding something that gives everything haste is creatures you control have haste is the most common phrasing of it so one of the things i like to do say we are looking for an extra turn spell so we type another turn into here and we have a really weird search. Uh, I'm not even sure what we're getting. This isn't what we want, though. I'm not just seeing, like, time walks and stuff. So let's type the name of a specific extra turn spell, like Time Warp. That's one that I know off the top of my head. Target player takes an extra turn. Oh, so it's not another turn. It's extra turn. So if we type extra turn... Now we have all the cards in Modern that allow us to take extra turns. All different ones, some that you probably know, Temporal Mastery, Temporal Trespass, Time Warp, other weird ones, Magosi the Water Veil, Wanderwine Prophets, Champion of Merfolk. So if you can search up one card that you know has the text, then you can often find the right wording to be able to find the rest of the cards with that text. So let's do one more really in-depth search, and we're getting to the point where we're out of time. But let's say we are building a Legacy deck, and it is a mono red deck we're looking for a creature so we have legacy red creatures and let's say we only want goblins so we can search through this subtype list there's goblin so if we click subtypes so now we have only red creatures in legacy with goblin but we can go even more in depth than that let's say we want 
only one drops. So we can go to this converted mana cost filter, set it to one. So now we have one converted mana cost goblins, but what if we want to go more in depth? We only want things that have at least two power. What two power red goblins are there? And there's a small group. Goblin, <laughs> goblin Guide, Goblin Cadets, Tattermon Maniac, Blood Craze Goblin, Goblin Cohort. So you get a really in-depth look at these one drops, and it was it's so easy to do once you get used to it. And I don't know another program where with just a couple clicks of a button, you can filter so easily to exactly what you want. Uh, let's reset the filters, do one more, because it's actually kind of fun. One of the things I like to do occasionally when I'm building a deck, let's say we are building a modern green-white deck, and our idea is to be like a, a stompy deck, where we want to be beating down. So, but we don't know the specific cards we want. We just know that we want powerful creatures at each point on the curve. We want big things that can kill our opponent quickly. So we filter to modern. We filter to green and white. We can set the type to creatures. And then, since we don't really have a creature type in mind or whatever, we can go to, let's say we go to converted mana cost of two. So set this to two. And then, instead of typing in anything else, we can just like pump this power up. How many three power, well, this is four power, but how many three power creatures are there in green or white in modern? Actually quite a few. So what if we go up even further to four power? What four power two drops are there? Uh, Jotun Grunt, Sheltering Ancient, Talran's Battalion. Okay, so most of them have a weird downside. The exception being Talran's Battalion, which does require some comboing off, but apparently that's uh, four power for two mana is way above the curve. But then we can maybe bump this converted mana cost up to three, and we still have the power at four. So there are several green and white three drops that have four power. Loxodon Smiter jumps out as something that's pretty above the curve. Leatherback Bayloth, if we can cast it. Some weird ones that we probably wouldn't play, like Force of Shavaging and Groundbreaker. What if we go to five? Are there any... Okay, there's some five power stuff, but they all have huge downsides. Stoic Ephemron, Sacrifice at the End of Combat and Defender. This vanishes in a couple of turns. Groundbreaker, Force of Savagery. So if we're going to build a deck, we'd probably start with maybe Loxodon Smiter. I forgot all about Boon Seder. That's actually like a pretty above-the-curve card. Like, this is all the green and white three drops in Modern that have four power, and Boon Seder's on the list, so that's pretty above the curve, and a lot of them are, are not good for various reasons. Like, one toughness... Uh, we can also also filter toughness, so let's bump the toughness up to, like, three. The list gets pretty small. Smiter and Leatherback Bayloth are clearly above the curve for what they're doing. So this just gives you an idea of how you can use all these filters to find what you need. Uh, you can also just reset it and do really simple stuff, like building a this or that deck. We're building pirates. You just type pirate. Here are the pirates that are available. Uh, you can type in core. Here are the core that are available. So it's really simple to find whatever you're looking for, no matter what you're looking for. So I highly recommend using Magic Online as a deck building tool. For me, it is way easier than any of the other options. It is way more intuitive than most of the other options. And it's just super easy to filter for exactly what you're looking for. So even if you're not a Magic Online player and you're not especially interested in buying digital cards, playing Magic Online games. I think that it's worth it to, if you have the money, to spend the 10 bucks to get an account just to use for deck building purposes. The last thing is, which is super awesome, is let's say you build a deck. So we add a new deck, uh, we type in a deck name, choose a format, whatever. We'll do test. Uh, so we have a deck, we put some cards in it, so you build an actual deck in Magic Online, and you can just drag the cards down into the deck building area. Then, all you gotta do is right-click on the deck name over here, where it says Test, do Export, and <laughs> Worms Armageddon. Uh, if you set this to plain text, you'll just get a text document that has it written out. You can also download it in other formats, like spreadsheets and stuff. But if you just uh, 
export it, you'll have the list, and then you can just copy and paste it into MTG Goldfish or whatever site you use to store your decks. They also store on Magic Online as well, but it's super easy to get them from Magic Online into Goldfish, which then lets you, with a click of the button, buy the cards in the paper world or on Magic Online or whatever other site you like to use. So there's some really good advantages to using Magic Online as a deck building tool, and as far as I can tell, it's the best option available on the market. So anyway, that's been our Brewers Minute for this week. I know it's a little different than usual, uh, not going in-depth with deck building, but kind of talking about the technical stuff. Anyway, I hope it's been beneficial. Hopefully this uh, helps at least some of you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon.